Have you ever wanted to launch a podcast with a friend, but they live in a different city? On this episode of Sound 101, I'm gonna teach you just that. I'm Andrew from DD Microphones. Let's get started. So you and your friend have a podcast idea and you're excited and you wanna get going. Let's talk about what you need to do before the actual recording. It's great for you to create an outline so that you and everyone involved in your podcast is on the same page. This allows your guest or your co-host to submit topics. You can create segments. You can outline it all out so you know the flow of the show before you even hit record. Here's an example of an interview outline that we like. Now, when it comes to actually doing the recording of your podcast, you need to find an environment that is friendly to podcasting. What does that actually mean though? Well, you want an environment that has low reflective surfaces. A reflective surface is gonna be a hard, flat, usually wooden or concrete kind of surface. So what you really want is carpeted floors. You want bookshelves, something to break up the sound wave. So as it goes out and hits a subject, it doesn't immediately just slap you back in the face. It gets broken up. So furniture, all this kind of stuff actually helps an environment sound better. Something else that can make a lot of noise other than reflective surfaces are noisy roommates and possible loud traffic outside. So find a time that's gonna work for you and your guests. Remember, time zones can be tricky. Something else that can really help you with this kind of noise isolation issue is getting a microphone that also helps you isolate you from your environment. Something like this, the VO7U, is a super cardioid microphone, which really means it's only gonna pick up right in front of it, not too much to the side, so reflective environments kind of get reduced naturally due to the pickup pattern of the microphone. Further, the dynamic element of this versus a condenser is less sensitive. So sounds that are further away kind of get masked out altogether and sounds only close to the microphone are what get picked up. So a dynamic super cardioid plus a good room should make for a great podcast studio. So now let's actually talk about setting up the microphone. Now you may say to yourself, Andrew, this is really easy. You just, you put it down and you like talk into it. Well, Kinda. Here's why I'm gonna say we really need to talk about this, and that is most people are gonna have issues with plosives, especially if you're going with a budget to your microphone, which are very susceptible to plosives in the puffs of air that come out of our mouth. This is what plosive sounds like, plosive. You can reduce that if you talk across the microphone and not down into it. So like what I have set up here, I have it on a boom arm, so it's isolated from my hands down here. So if I'm typing on my keyboard, if I'm doing anything else during the podcast, it's isolated, it's in its own little shock mount, it's got an internal shock mount, but more importantly, it's pointed at the corner of my mouth. So as I'm talking to you guys right now, if I was doing a podcast, it's still gonna sound fantastic, but not have to deal with a lot with my B's and P sounds and all my plosives. The last thing I'll say about mic placement is if you wanna turn your audio podcast into a video podcast also, you can still make eye contact with your audience. They get your full face, they get your full gestures. You can emote without this giant thing just blocking your face. Like right now, can you really relate to what I'm saying? No, but now you do and yet you still get that podcasty kind of sound. So mic placement, very important. Now one of the best things about doing a podcast with a friend who's actually not in the same room with you is it's actually a lot easier to do now than probably to do one with them actually in the room. And that is because cloud-based software makes it super easy. Today, we're gonna to be doing this all with clean feed. Only one person needs the account, you the host, and you just email out invites to your guests and your co-hosts and boom, they're all in the session with you. If you wanna make it a video podcast, you can look at a software like Riverside, just you need a lot more things like cameras and a little bit more extra work maybe in post to clean it all up. Audio is a lot more simpler. So today, we're gonna to be looking at just clean feed. So we are in clean feed. The first thing I want to do is go to my audio tab here at the top and make sure I change this from minimum quality talkback to speech optimized. That's going to allow it so it sounds really good for a voice kind of podcast, not a music based podcast. The next thing I want to do is I want to change it to my microphone. It's going to use the browser settings, which is going to be set based on whatever browser you're using. But here I can actually select the DD VO7U. So there I've selected it. But what you'll notice now is the little green little VU meter is not very high. So I need to dial that in. Now with clean feed, I want to avoid going into the yellow so I can make sure I only get the strongest signal without clipping. Yellow in clean feed means clipping. 
So we wanna avoid all of that. Headphones, it's the same deal. It's gonna be following your system settings. Here, my system is set currently to my MacBook. I could set it over here to the VO7U if I wanted to do latency free monitoring, but I'd have to pay for a pro version of clean feed. But other than that, pretty darn good. We're ready to now invite our guest. Now, in order to invite your guest or your co-host, you're gonna hit the connect button, type in their name, type in their email address, hit invite. That's gonna send them an email with a URL so they actually can join your direct session. Once they're in the session, do a little warm up with them and a little test to make sure their audio gain sounds good and they're ready to go. So when you hit record, there's no surprises. So now that I've got my co-host in with me, he's up on the phone, I'm gonna hit record. Here, I can actually do things like name the recording and then of course, add the time and date to the file name. That's really beneficial. Now, when it comes to setting up what is being recorded, you could record just your audio. Not really ideal, not really usable for anything. Guest only, well, that's gonna work fine if you have another recorder on your machine recording, but it's not really, again, it's still kind of difficult to work with. Everyone, and it's gonna put both your guest, you, into a single kind of mix down, or you can do a split stereo, where this puts you on the left and your guest and co-host on the right. This way you can kind of get a little bit of isolation and editing and post if you need to, and you're only doing a two-person podcast, that's great. If you're doing a multi-person podcast, you're gonna to wanna to have to pay for the software and get the multi-track. Now, personally, this is episode one, we're just getting started. This is kind of a beginner course, so I'm gonna select everyone, which is gonna merge it all together. So now I'm ready to hit the record button, but first I'm gonna give my co-host a heads up so they know they're about to be recorded, and we're just gonna begin. I'm joined by my podcast co-host, who's gonna walk us through what to do during a recording. Hi everybody, my name is Blake, and I've got some tips to make your recording session feel as professional as possible. First up, always monitor while you record. Be on the lookout for audio problems in your nearby environment. Loud trucks outside, people talking outside your room, a dog barking. Make sure none of it is trampling over those lines. Watch your DB level throughout the podcast. Sometimes conversations naturally grow in volume as you become more excited. Adjust that gain knob to compensate. Luckily, after you go 50% on the gain knob on the VO7U, there is a built-in analog limiter, which is a little bit of a safety net. Next, try not to talk over each other. If your editor needs to isolate one person's voice for any reason, this will make it easier. Plus, it's also kind of rude. Finally, understand that 99% of the podcasts you listen to are edited. Don't be afraid to go back to a question or a line of dialogue to make sure you get a clear take of it. You will thank yourself later. If you follow all these steps, you will have a successful recording session and are ready to download the file. So now it's come time to actually download our podcast. I'm gonna hit the record button, which will pause it. We're gonna come over here to the other side though and click the download icon. So my podcast folder, and it's going to be episode one, and it's got all my date and time information, and I'm gonna hit save, and it's gonna download it. Now that we downloaded all of our audio, we are ready for the editing portion of podcasting, which is where you get rid of all the fat, add your music, maybe add sound effects, whatever you wanna do. We're gonna do all that in a future episode. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it. Here's an example of our podcast. Right, but like if you went to a basketball resort called Slam Hoop Hotel. I don't play basketball. Well, then I would but, not go there if I were but you. But I'm at this hotel. Right, well, then I think but, but you, I am you misbooked. But I am at that hotel. Yeah, but you misbooked. Like, because then you could be like on okay, vacation, okay. right? Be on vacation and have the whole court to yourself. Mm -hmm. Like, every guest has a half court. That's a fun thing to do as an adult. Dude, when you get there, you'll understand. <laughs>